the affectionate television portrait of the king reveals a playful and warm relationship with his son. The documentary follows the build-up to the elaborate ceremony in May. It also shows the Archbishop of Canterbury forgetting his lines in a rehearsal. I have a memory that is probably about as good as our spaniel, in other words zero, says Archbishop Justin Welby, about not knowing the words during one of numerous practice runs for the ceremony. When the Archbishop freezes mid-prayer, as he blesses the king in the coronation chair, another clergyman teases, you must have said this before. The king, wearing the golden coronation robes over his suit and tie, also dissolves into giggles. The leisurely 90-minute documentary, Charles III, The Coronation Year, to be screened on BBC One on Boxing Day, shows King Charles as a good-natured figure, immersed in the complex preparations for his crowning. Was the king's first year a success? What was it really like in the coronation? Animation of the dazzling St. Edward's crown. Story of the coronation in photos. A replica of part of Westminster Abbey was built inside Buckingham Palace, so the participants could keep practicing. In one of the final rehearsals, in the Abbey itself, the cameras captured Prince William rather tenderly supporting his father. When the prince struggles to fasten one of the ceremonial robes, the king tells him not to worry, as he does not have sausage fingers like his father. There are scenes showing the intricate craft skills involved in preparations, including getting ready the historic crowns and the highly decorated robes. The documentary had private access to follow the first year of the new reign, after the death of Queen Elizabeth II. The king is seen caught up in the emotions of the late queen's funeral and there is an interview in which his sister princess and speaks of the serendipity of being in Balmoral when her mother was dying. The Princess Royal said the late Queen felt it would be more difficult if she died at Balmoral, suggesting the monarch wanted to avoid causing issues to others at the end of her life. We did try and persuade her that that, that shouldn't be part of the decision-making process, she recalled. I hope she felt that that was right in the end, because I think we did. The princess also spoke of a strange sense of relief when she saw the crown taken off her mother's coffin, as though that symbolized the end of her long commitment to duty. The film, written by royal author Robert Hartman, also sees the king showing his support for Ukrainian troops training for the war against Russia's invasion. This is the biggest such television project of the new reign and it features glimpses of the king's daily working life, going through the red boxes of government documents, which we learn happens every day apart from a day off at Christmas and Easter. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak bobs about on a visit to meet the king, looking like an intern wondering how long he can stretch out the small talk. There is a moment too that seems to appeal to the king's sense of humor, when he and his private secretary look at a message being sent to Sweden that is written in Swedish, when they realize they have no idea what they are sending. It is a warm and sympathetic account of the new reign, with no glimpses of any difficult headlines from the year, whether about Prince Harry, Prince Andrew, a palace race row or protesters arrested at the coronation. But it shows the king and queen as a couple strengthened by each other, starting a busy new stage in their lives when most people of their age would be ready to put up their feet.